Hello. So now I'm going to tell you about the side determination of kidneys. This is a very common uh, hard question that's asked in the wild exams. Because there are specimens, please, here I have like, you know, with me, there are three kidneys, the three human kidneys brought from different categories. And the one thing that's very important when you pick up a kidney, they will ask you that uh, which side kidney it is. So, to identify the side determination of a kidney, remember, not only the kidney, like maybe of lungs or side determination of any bone or even something which is bilateral. So, you have to actually fix that viscera or a specimen into three different plates. That is an anterior posterior plane, you have to fix it. Then, you have to fix it into the transverse plane and you have to fix it in a vertical plane. So if you're fixing that specimen into three different planes, then you'll be very much sure of the side to which that specimen belongs. Got it? Okay. So now let's see. First of all, we'll talk about like uh, the side, uh, side determination of this kidney. So uh, one thing is, you know, this is the vertical plane. But vertical, you have to identify the upper and lower plane. So one thing is, you know, that the upper pole is wider, lower pole is narrower, which may not be very easy to distinguish because most of the terminology is very much theoretical, generalized, but you may not be aware, it may, it may not very much appreciable. So, but what I'm telling is for your knowledge purpose that the upper pole is broader but the lower pole is narrower and pointed, one thing. Then the second thing is the transverse plane, right? The transverse plane, how will you fix it? Very easy, that the lateral border will be convex laterally, the medial border will have a concave hilus that will be facing medially. So you fix the transverse plane, you fix the vertical plane. Now talking about the anterior posterior plane. So how do we confirm the anterior posterior plane? Let me tell you the two surfaces. The anterior surface is said to be near, I mean, irregular. Why it's irregular? Because it's in relation with a lot of viscera over like this, right? But posterior surface is said to be smooth. Why smooth? Because it's resting on the muscles, right? The bed of the kidney, swas major, quadratus lumorum, and transversalis abdominis. So that's why posterior surface is said to be smooth, but anterior surface is said to be irregular. But again, this will not help you very much for side determination because there are hardly much appreciable differences here on the although you can see the posterior surface is flat and smooth, but the anterior one is irregular. But the, you know, the uh, confirmatory uh, side determination can be identified just by the looking at the hilar structures. So, you have to focus upon the hilar structures. This will help you, you know, to determine the anterior posterior axis as well as the vertical axis. So, look here now. You know that this hilum actually there is, you know, renal vein placed most anteriorly, you know. Then you have a renal artery and posterior most of the renal pelvis. Got it? So V A D duct. V A D. Why I'm telling you V A D? So because you remember this, well, I'll be telling you about teaching you about the liver. In liver, this configuration will just reverse. In liver, it's D A V, right? So in liver, you know, this bile duct will be anterior. Then you have a, a hepatic artery and then portal vein, which is most posterior. So this very easily you can remember. Uh, in liver you can remember because the gallbladder is placed most anteriorly. It is even uh, visible at this cystic notch. So there remember DAV is the formula, right? And here the renal pelvis is most posterior. So remember the formula is VAD in the kidney. So anterior most you can easily identify because it's a thin wall structure. When it's a thin wall structure, it will be a vein, right? So it's renal vein. Thin wall is renal vein. The next thing is renal artery. Renal artery, comparatively, you can see it is elastic and it has a recoil. 
it has a recoil and it's elastic so this is renal artery so this is renal vein renal artery and behind to that is the renal pelvis and what you are seeing is a depression here this depression all which is like you know there is like uh, perinephric fat also all this is actually called renal sinus so this renal sinus is providing the passage for this renal vein renal artery and then renal pelvis now renal pelvis is actually the upper dilatation of the upper and the ureters which is reaching into this renal sinus now this uh, renal uh, sinus actually descends down in the form of ureters and ureter you know has this uh, tendency in you know of going down so this will not only fix the anteroposterior axis but it will also fix the vertical axis it will also fix the vertical axis why because now you see this will become a loop like this so you're very sure that this ureter is not has is not going this way rather it will go down smoothly like this way so if you place it the other way this will be sure that this is not the this is the lower end this is the upper end right because it is arching like this it should go down straight so if you do it like this now you'll find that it is suspended like this so that means this is the lower pole this is the upper pole so uh, the vertical axis can be confirmed by the descent of the ureter which should be smoothly running downwards instead of arching like this so this becomes the lower pole of the kidney this becomes the upper pole anteroposterally you fixed it that VAD is the formula renal vein most anterior that thin walls and your renal artery and renal pelvis by the way let me tell you that you might find some variations anomalies and all because you know there are five uh, vascular segments of the kidney so hepatic artery when it enters it sometimes you might find that there is a branch of renal artery entering the hilum even behind to the renal pelvis. Similarly, there might be a tributary to the renal vein also, which might emerge from behind the renal pelvis and then join the renal vein. In the same plane behind the renal pelvis, you will find renal, a branch of renal artery and tributary of renal vein also. So don't get confused. One thing is VAT that will cut from your side determination. Okay, so that was uh, the, I just like to hold on. I will uh, show you in other kidneys as well so that it becomes easy for you to understand. Look here now, first of all, you have to identify like when you look to the kidney, first of all, identify the three structures the thin wall. First of all, look at the thin wall structure when you see that this structure is coming this is an elasticity you have a recoil in this so this becomes a renal artery then what you see is a thin wall structure this is a thin wall structure and this is this you see is renal vein so if this is renal vein this is thin wall This is renal vein, this is renal artery, vein you are seeing is anterior, this should be anterior, thin walled renal vein which is collapsing, you can see this is collapsing but this is not collapsing so this is the renal artery and behind to that will be the renal pelvis, the continuation of ureter, right. So this kidney when you place the renal artery in front you will find that this ureter is also going down although it has been cut very you know closely to the renal pelvis so this becomes the kidney on the right side got it now look here in this kidney one thing i told you that is uh, you know it is narrower and more in length that also is one feature of left kidney then here in this kidney you know what is this this is the left suprarenal gland right so this knot has been dissected it out we have not separated it it's still uh, you know attached to this now what you're finding is this renal vein left renal vein renal vein as i told you is a collapsible structure 
and it is thin wall and you know it has tributaries you can very easily see there is this tributary reaching from the suprarenal draining into the left renal vein right so this is suprarenal vein left suprarenal vein draining to the left renal vein and what is this this is left testicular vein so left testicular vein also drains into the left renal vein okay so the next structure behind to this you will find is the artery again this is elastic having a recoil and this will be the thick wall this is renal artery then behind to that will be the ureter which is a continuation of the renal pelvis and you can see it is directed downwards now if you if you play going to try to place it like this one thing the ureter doesn't ascend rather ureter will straight away descend down so this is confirmatory of two things one thing is anterior posterior uh, trans axis is fixed because of the renal vein being in front and pelvis behind and because it directed downwards so this will be the lower pole this will be upper pole got it sir so that was about the side donation of the kidney hope it will help you